Hey there everyone, I'm Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and in today's episode we're going to be talking about the Badalkin. Old veterans of the Magic the Gathering multiverse, Ravnica is the first opportunity for D&D players to take up the Blue Mantle. Badalkin are researchers, seekers of truth, and have the complexion of a popular primary color, along with being studious, logical, and quite often adept to the arcane. Badalkin are perfect for bringing some law and order into your next adventuring party and are a little strange to play, so we're going to go over everything you need to know about them in today's episode. Sadly, we don't really have much in the way of Badalkin culture on record. Or rather, most of the culture we do know doesn't apply to the Badalkin you'll actually have an opportunity to play as. Most races exist on multiple planes within the Magic the Gathering multiverse, and while Badalkin exist in Ravnica, they're not exactly major players there. What we do have for the Badalkin is more like a collection of common personality traits rather than any sort of culture or history. Badalkin are perfectionists in everything they do, and they tend to find everything and everyone less than perfect. This is more of an opportunity for them than a problem, as they constantly work to be perfect, complete, and fix the problems that they see in the world. Many people start to regard them as emotionless. Their stoic blue faces rarely betray any hint of emotion. And yet, they do feel just as deeply as any other race. They just have trouble showing it, which I can relate to. Badalkins are cool, calm, and collected, and even amidst disaster, a Badalkin is often the rational voice of reason. Badalkin on Ravnica have all those same traits of logic and reasoning, and they tend to get along with the guilds who share some of those sentiments. Usually they're drawn to the Azurius Senate or the Simic Combine, and rarely they'll end up in the scientific but uncontrolled laboratories of the Izzet League. The seemingly endless bureaucracy of the Azorius is easy to understand and strangely appealing to many Badalkin. The Senate is an institution of logic and rules, even if those rules have been made nigh impenetrable and overly complex. When citizens are summoned into the Senate for some ruling or court order, it's quite common to see a Vidalcan hard at bureaucratic paperwork signing papers in triplicate. The more idealistic Vidalcan often finds themselves at home in the Simic Combine. The Combine is a place of academia, research, and projects intended to improve both lives and life itself. The Simic has a poor track record when it comes to morality, but their heart, or at least their mission statement, is in the right place. The clear logic of the Simic Badalkin is prized, and it's quite common to find them hard at work in the Simic laboratories and habitats. Their dedication to whichever cause or project that catches their imagination often leads them down to the path of self-augmentation and transformation into Simic hybrids, which we also did an episode on if you'd like to check that out. Finally, the Izzet League sometimes calls to those Badalkins that have prioritized knowledge itself over the wisdom of seeking it. The Izzet are largely concerned with scientific accomplishment. Surviving the experiments is merely a secondary worry to them. Izzet Vidalkin tend to be on the more rational end of the league, wild by Vidalkin standards though, and still reliably keeping the lights on and the engine that drives the city turning. Just picture smart aliens from any random sci-fi movie that you've seen and turn them blue and you're basically most of the way there. Vidalkin are largely humanoid. Besides their blue skin, the most outward notable feature about them is their lack of external ears. Badalkin are a bit on the tall side as well, usually between six and six and a half feet, and tend to have slightly larger heads with broad, flat noses. In a lot of ways, they're quite similar to fur bulgs, again, just more blue. At a more detailed level, their skin is also strangely porous, and they breathe through their skin, so that's also a visual to keep in mind for the future. Sadly, there just isn't a whole lot of variation to play around with when it comes to the Vidalkin. They're humanoid, blue, and that's kind of all you got. You can slide that blue shader from light to dark as much as you want, but their base physiology is rather unified. I recommend focusing on your Vidalkin character's guild for determining their appearance. An Azorius Vidalkin may have clerical robes, lumage rune-encrusted armor, or bureaucratic sigils of office dangling from their neck. A Simic Vidalkin might have minor biological or technological augmentations integrated into their bodies, or perhaps a simple lab coat hiding a few biologically mutated pets. And an Izzet Vidalkin may dress in flamboyant robes and sparkling diodes of their own design, goggle lines still marking the soot from a previous experiment. This is where you can really start to have fun with customization. Vidalkin have single names divided by gender. They are named by their parents, but usually pick a name for themselves as a rite of passage as they reach adulthood. We'll throw some examples on screen so you know exactly what we're talking about. 
Starting off with your ability score increase, your intelligence score increases by two and your wisdom score increases by one. This is a rare double mental stat race, which pushes you fairly hard into casters, particularly artificers and wizards. As for your age, the Dalkin mature slower than humans do, reaching maturity around age 40. Their lifespan is typically 350 years, with some living as old as 500. This is a bit chunky of a lifespan that can easily include some other historical events in there. Feel free to play around with your age as a vulnerable 450 year old or a young buck under 100. There's really no wrong way to go with this. As for alignments, very little fluff on this one. They're just straight up lawful and usually non-evil. This shouldn't be a problem for most builds you're most likely going to make as a Vidalcan, but it does make justifying a Vidalcan Barbarian that much harder. In terms of size or speed, there's nothing really unusual here, but with their Vidalcan Dispassion, this is where the real meat of the race comes in. You have advantage on all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, and man is this powerful. There's not a ton to discuss about it, it just kind of works and makes you substantially more resistant to every mental effect on the field. You also have tireless precision, meaning that you are proficient in one of the following skills of your choice. We will throw those up here so that you can have a better look. And you are also proficient with one tool of your choice. Whenever you make an ability check with either the skill or the tool, roll a d4 and add that number rolled to the check's total. Free proficiencies are great, and this takes it a step further making you essentially a specialist in one skill or tool of your choice. They give you some excellent options here too. Picking thieves tools especially, since most artisan tools rarely get used, can make you the party safe cracker all on its own. As a Vidalcan, you are also partially amphibious, meaning that by absorbing the oxygen through your skin, you can breathe underwater for up to one hour. Once you've reached that limit, you can't use this trait again until you finish a long rest. Essentially, this works as an hour of water breathing per day. Note that this doesn't grant you a swim speed, it just stops you from drowning for an hour. Remember that you have this to fall back on when you're selecting your spells though, so you can likely skip the water breathing spell. And finally, you are able to speak, read, and write in common, Vidalcan, and one other language of your choice. Vidalcan is extremely obscure and is unlikely to ever come up in your campaign. Use that language choice to nab whatever you think seems most relevant to your adventure. And finally, let's get into some Vidalcan builds, and as I always mention on this show, you do not have to build your character any certain way. You are more than welcome to build them as optimized or as unoptimized as you want, and I will just tell you right off the bat, I actually don't optimize most of my characters because I just think it's more fun. But if that is something that is important to you, we have some good starting points here. Starting with the Azorius Guild Mage, or as I call them, Tough Wizards. The Dalkin, with their bonuses to both intelligence and wisdom, are uniquely equipped to pull off the cleric wizard multiclassing. I recommend making intelligence your highest stat and getting wisdom up to at least 13, and strangely enough, your strength up to 13 as well. Take your first level as a cleric with the Forge Domain, and take all future levels as a wizard and select the School of Abjuration. Forge Domain is granting you a complement of cleric spell slots for healing, heavy armor proficiency, and proficiency with shields as well as an ability that grants your armor a bonus point of AC. The School of Abjuration gets you a ward that has a hit point maximum equal to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier that can take hits instead of you. Put on the chainmail and grab a shield and now put it all together at third level, one cleric level and two wizard levels, and you have a caster with an AC of 19, seven temporary hit points, and access to healing spells. Like I said, I like to call them the tough wizards. And then we have the Simic Researcher, or the Smart Druid. Circle of the Shepherd is probably the most thematically appropriate here, but really any druid will do. Druid spellcasting and animal transformation strategies share a common weakness in charisma saving throws. A charmed or frightened druid is unlikely to be much of any use to anybody. But Dalkin Dispassion neatly covers this weakness, and while the intelligence bonus isn't fully utilized, the wisdom is still needed here, and Vidalcan Druid will sail right through a lot of effects that would otherwise send Druids spiraling. And then we have the Izzet Guild Mage, or the Explosive Artificer, one of my personal favorite builds. In all fairness though, any Vidalcan Wizard or Artificer build will be an absolute winner. The plus two bonus to intelligence is amazing in both cases, and the Vidalcan Dispassion makes you incredibly resilient to most mental effects. One of the best combinations as a Vidalcan, though, is to take the Izzet Engineer background and taking levels in Artificer. Artificers suffer in dealing damage, at least for the first few levels, and the Izzet Engineer background uniquely grants you access to some powerful spells, mostly the Chaos Bolt, 
and then simply select the Artillerist specialty and start blowing stuff up. Still though, any Vidalcan Wizard or Artificer build is going to do you wonders, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new content like this every week. And if you're creating a Vidalcan character that you're proud of, I would love to read about it down in the comments, especially because I have run into a ton in my time as both an adventurer and a DM, and I'm curious how your guys' stack up to the ones that I have met. Thanks again for watching. My name's Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss out.